Okay guys, welcome back. Well, I'll try an angle here that might that might help you. I'll actually aim a little bit a bit like that Rick Shields angle that he has where he has the camera pointed back here. I'll hit a couple this way. So guys, if I'm going to line up my target's there just left of the camera. Everything's square here. Clubs here, I can do this to the right of my body. I can cut the ribbon there if I had a katana sword. Okay, so that's all there, that's it. Turn the feet, step away. Back cock, five o'clock nose. And I'm gonna get, I'm just gonna try and get this, this lead shoulder over my trail foot. That was the other thing. That's, that's, I'll go front on here. Guys, this is really important. And this will give you some good timing as well and give you some power. If we're here, if I can turn, turn that, this, this lead shoulder over the trail foot there, that gets the club back a little bit. Now the other thing for me guys, which I'm trying to incorporate, is I'm trying to have a really soft left lead arm. I actually want to feel like it's bending so that I can actually get this going. That's where I want to be. That for me is huge power. That's almost two clubs with my irons when I do that and it's 30 yards with my driver. But because I'm so trained and so disciplined over the years of never bending my lead arm, but as I've got um, older, I've lost the, the turn flexibility in my hips and I don't turn as much as I used to. So in order to get the club back where it needs to be, if I just if I just soften that left arm, lead arm, and get it to here, that's a lot of hoot. And that lead shoulder over that uh, lead shoulder over that trail foot. Okay, we'll just hit a couple this way. Got five iron here, guys. First shots of the day. Been in the gym for about two and a half hours today. Didn't work out over the weekend, so I I dogged the gym over the weekend, so I punished myself today. And I am stiff as. So here we are, guys. Put that lead shoulder here. Now guys, you can see that clearance there. <coughs> the emphasis is still on that, the emphasis is really on that trail axis. We don't want to be rolling over. A good shot for me is when I feel like, when I finish like this. If I can finish like that, I've delivered it up the channel <coughs> and, I've, and I've fired that trail side to its maximum efficiency. No question about that. Now that's the first shot of the day. It was about fourth groove, but it went perfectly straight at the target. And that was really stiff. So here we are, guys. Here we are. Step away, JH. Back cock. Five o'clock nose. It's just a bullet, guys. Just a bullet. I've always played with, you know, a little, you know, three to five yard draw. But this basically goes dead straight. And you'll get no slinging draw. You'll never ever get a slinging draw with this golf swing. It just can't happen. Not unless you, not unless you stayed back excessively and really over released the golf club. If you wanted to sling one around a dog leg, you could do that. But that's shot making and shaping, which we'll go into later on once we once we learn to hit the ball straight and, and reasonably uh, consistently. Here we go. Back loaded. Five o'clock nose.
The hardest thing for me guys is the five o'clock nose. Now that was that was that was a that was definitely like a like a two o'clock nose. And when I get the two o'clock nose, I get the ball that fourth groove. Still goes good, but I get it fourth groove. Okay, five o'clock nose, Jack. Yeah, five o'clock nose, and that's just perfect. Wow, it's a good shot. Really good. I'll talk about the angles. If I'm aiming perfectly square to the line here, I want to make sure I'm just not too close to the to the camera. I'm aiming at the target guys, which is left of the camera. Here dead square. Shoulders are dead square. Balls on, a, on that line there. I'm going to move on this line here. Shoulders are here. Now I've got to come back to the ball line. Here. That's the reason you back cock the shoulders, guys. You've got to get back to the ball line. That's what that's about. Okay, we're really warmed up after a couple. Wow. Now, the old story of hit and fall back that you shouldn't have in a conventional swing, and you can't have that in a conventional swing because the golf ball is so far over there in front of your body, you know, past your centre line. You can't hit and fall back or the ball will just go all over the place and you'll be lucky to get to it. But in this golf swing, you want to stay back here because that's where the ball is. That's where the ball is. So we want to stay back there. We've had a lot of guys, some of the some of the videos that have the static on them sometimes, it just comes because we're we're near the airport here and there's a lot of microwave towers and sometimes they've got different things on and, and it just comes in and just kills the kills the uh, the audio because the audio you know remote things we've got here are on mobile or cell phone frequencies and that's why I can get interfered with so that's why it happens sometimes it's so annoying and you never know what's happening until you play the video back Okay, now really make a good move on this one, JH. Really feel like that right shoulder's under, which is a nice feeling. That's the other thing, guys. One of the other points. If you, once you're in the channel here, you're going to fire. One of the things down, so we've got to pull with that lead hand as much as we can, we've got to really pull, especially with the driver, I pull so hard with that lead hand. Now, because what that does, guys, if I get here and I pull with that lead hand, it pulls this shoulder up and drops this one down. I've got to pull, it gets that lead shoulder up, gets the shoulders square to closed, and you can never ever come over the shot. You just won't do that. So there's a couple of things extra. Now pulling with that lead hand gets that lead shoulder up. Yeah, clock him down. Okay, Jay. Five o'clock nose. It's amazing. I mean, I'm as much as I'm. Th there's got to be something in the. in the neural uptake mechanism that's that's giving me a a complete um, removal from that process thought i'm thinking you know five o'clock but as soon as i start the club back that thought's gone it just goes 
and when I get it, and I don't know how to get it all the time, but when I do get it, it's a, uh, that's Flush City. So that's what I've got to work on. It might be easy for you guys. That's what I have to work on. Step away, James. See, there it is, guys. If I can get that five o'clock nose, ball doesn't move. And you may not be anywhere near as extreme as I am in terms of your numbers, your percentages, your angles. The main thing is that you play the ball back here and whatever you need to do to be able to attack the ball in this channel here, whatever you need to do to do that. Feel free to do anything. But the whole criteria, or the important part, the important criteria of this golf swing is to be able to attack in that in that channel there. Lock the club in that channel. However you do that, now the, 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 the main, the, the fundamental mechanics and geometry is that in order to get into that channel, guys, you've just, you've got, these shoulders must be here and the arms must swing underneath those shoulders. Otherwise you can't get into that channel. Now, however you do that, it's up to you. I'm doing it this way because that works for me. Here we are, turn the feet, step away. Just dead straight, guys. Now I'm not getting back as far as I need to get back today because um, it's early and I've, just, I've been in the gym and I'm as tight as a drum, so I'm not getting that lead shoulder across as much as I need to get it across, clearly. And I'll try and do it now. Okay, go through the process. Square, turn the feet, step away, back cock the shoulders, five o'clock nose, and the lead shoulder across to the right. <laughs> you never get a ball going over here. I mean, I, I mean, it's just extraordinary. I mean, I just, I can never hit the ball over there again. It can't go over there. If it's in the channel lock, it cannot go there. I know this is boring stuff and you'll hear it a lot. Okay, put a good one on this, Jase. Back lock it, shoulder across, soft left arm, lead arm. Just beautiful. Be beautiful. <clears throat> Still fighting the five o'clock nose. I don't know why it's so hard for me. I, it's almost like as soon as I get into the backswing, it just, it goes. Step away, back load. There was five o'clock nose. And it's just dead straight. And guys, the point about the ball going normal distance and normal height is because we don't have, look, if we were in a conventional golf swing and we back footed it, we had our hands here, you've taken all the loft off the golf club. Five iron's gonna turn into a one iron. So, uh, but we don't have that, we're here. See a couple of drivers. Yeah, for those guys that uh, had trouble with the driver, guys, you've really got to commit to, uh, to keeping the shoulders closed. You cannot come over the ball and you cannot uh, drag it left if you keep that back. And you pull, I, I really pull so hard with my lead, my lead hand now with the driver. And I'm hitting the ball I mean, I'm usually a pretty straight driver, but I'm hitting it, I've never hit it as straight as I'm hitting it now. And I've never hit it as solid as I'm hitting it now, ever. And I can go after it, guys. You watch how hard I go after this.
I'll just turn around slightly guys because that's the out of bounds fence up there at about 250 and that's just gone straight through the fence there I'll just turn around and get on about a 280 line I can't hit it 280 but um, so that's uh, that's where I need to be come on Jade Oh, that's right at the 280 tree. Gee, that's straight. Guys, I'm no long knocker. On the golf course, you know, normal conditions, I could hit about 260 yards, maybe 270 sometimes. But I usually work at about 265. But they're genuine, they're, they're not Hollywood stuff. I mean, I can get it out 275. Um, and sometimes, you know, 280 if I, if I can turn it and get a bit of a bounce. But normally I carry it about 250 yards and run it about 15 or 20 yards. So, you know, but I've got to tell you with this, I've hit some ridiculous shots. I was hitting some here the other day and they're up near the back fence here, which is way up there. I never get up there. See, what's interesting, guys, is, is how flush the hit is and, and how there's no thought of release or having to transfer weight or anything. All I'm doing is pulling with that lead arm at 5 o'clock nose once I'm in that position. The harder I pull with that, that lead hand with the driver, the straighter I hit it and the more flush I hit it. It's just crazy. And I'm gripping the club down, of course, guys. Yeah, I couldn't never hit it left, and I couldn't come over it, ever. Just couldn't do it. Well, I'll smooth this one out. Here, step away, back load it. There, yeah, guys, it's just right at the 280 tree. Right at it. I mean, right at it. Didn't get to the 280 tree, but and because we're gonna we're into a wind here today, as we always are. Guys, I'm not trying to compete on the long drive, I'm just trying to play good solid drivers for my age and my strength. Okay, here we go. I'll really bust this one. I'll try and do really do everything really good here. Now guys, oh that'll go close. That'll go close. Yeah, that really <laughs> that really went up there. Yeah guys, just hitting some shots because this is my practice. Alright, see if you can really get that lead side across your H and, and have a really soft uh, lead arm and try and bend it a little bit. Back load. Now that's interesting. I mean that one's gone great, but I actually hit that hit that a little bit a little bit towards the heel. That means I must have really went out to it there and stayed there. It went fantastic. Well, it fell towards the hill. It didn't look like that in the flight. All right, let's see if I can make a really good backswing. See, these are easy, guys. The driver's just so easy. It's easy for me, the driver. Backload it. That's fantastic. I've got to see that one on video because I really felt... Oh, Whew. 
Guys, if you, when you're an old dude and you want to feel young, again, go out and hit shots like that. Because that feels like when I was 30 years old. Uh, younger. Now it makes me feel young because that's a beautiful shot. And that's pretty close to where I used to hit it 30 years ago. That was really long. Soft left arm, that one. You know, step away. Backload it. Wow. See that, guys? I'm here. That's where I want to be with the driver. Because if I'm back there, I know that I've used the integrity of this side to hit against closed shoulders. That was a really hard power draw, but it was only a two-yard draw, but it was power drawing. It was really what I call a rifling type shot. Okay, last one. Come on, Jay, it's really bust this one. Get it up to that 280 tree. And I just choked off the backswing. Choked the backswing off. Just hit a dead straight, but because I didn't didn't commit to the backswing, I didn't hit it as flush as I needed to. You've got to give yourself some time. Okay, last shot. As I would hit it on the golf course. Take the grip here, which I always do. In the lead hand. Here, come in here. Square it up, club behind the ball, step away, back load it, and just kill it. What a shot to finish on that. Just looking over the bushes here, guys. Yeah, that's the longest one. Okay, guys, just some shots, a few things. See what, the, uh, see what the sun's like, and I might hit some shots down, uh, down range. But we'll just keep doing and reinforcing, reinforcing, reinforcing. Five o'clock nose is so important. Pulling with the lead arm is important. I didn't have a lot of lead arm pull on mines. Got to do that. When I hit down range, I'm going to have a lot of pull on that lead arm, and I'm going to have a lot of softness in that lead arm. These are all the things we can build in, guys. Because for me, the soft lead arm is, is 20 yards. It's two, two irons and 20 yards on my driver. Just that. Three lever golf swing, guys. One lever, two levers, and the club's three. That's the golf swing of the future, let me tell you. Everybody should swing like that. Why would you want... <laughs> why would you ever want to have your arm straight on the backswing, which limits your leverage 30%, People say, oh, you bend your arm. Sure, I bend my arm. But as soon as I start down, centrif centrifugal inertia is going to straighten the lead arm anyway. I mean, it just has to do it. But you've got all the advantages of this extra lever here. Here. I've never understood people who say, I want to be w have a wide backswing. Why have a wide backswing when everything we, we do in a golf swing narrows the downswing? There's no advantage in a wide backswing if you're going to have a narrow downswing. And we do in a golf swing. The downswing is always narrower than the backswing. So, so we can have a narrow backswing here, and then that club will just straighten with 30% more leverage, but that's a story for another time. And another, another uh, adaptation to this golf swing. Three lever golf swing. Yeah, I, I, I'm not the inventor of that. Uh, Jack Kirkendall's been down that road. He had that thing called lever system golf. I think he patented it. He, he had that, that, that thing here where, where the club went up like this. He went like this. I mean, I wouldn't advocate swinging like that, but he went like that. Because you know what his premise was? He said that the biggest arc you can make in a golf swing is this one. Look where the club is. And that's how he swung the club. You know, I've got to agree with Jack there. Look, look where that golf club is. Here, as opposed to here. Look at that, how high that is. Now, imagine the speed you could generate from there if you can swing like that. That's another story for another day. Okay, guys, a lot of stuff happening uh, and will continue to evolve. I've got to think how I've got to package this thing to be commercial. So all the stuff you're seeing is only my evolution, my evolvement of the golf swing. So it's rough and ready, but uh, that's how you evolve things. It's called development, and this is the development phase of the swing. 
Okay guys, if the, if the sun is okay, I'll try and hit some shots down range. 